Thank you very much, guys. I think OMG pulling a Sneaky Baron, and I think the Sneaky Baron is what allowed them to win the game. We'll get to that in a moment or two. Let's talk about the two team compositions. Najin Shield pulling out the standard double carry Zed Castle, and they did it in the group stages, and OMG beat them with it. Yeah, they do this on blue side, for those of you who don't know, because both, as uh, Kobe was saying at the beginning of the game, because both save and Goon can play both of these champions. So it brings a lot of flexibility and it kind of eliminates that purple side counter pick that you get as last pick. Now, was it particularly helpful this game? No, it wasn't. I mean, Go Going still got really far ahead of this cast and Castan doesn't have a lot of tools in lane to deal with Aurelia, but that was kind of the thinking behind it. Now talk to me about the rest of the composition. We had sort of carry top laners for both squads, carry mid laners for both squads, mid game sort of AD carries on both sides. I feel like both of these key team comps stylistically were very similar. Doublelift, what do you think? I really disagreed with the Morg pick this game because really the only thing there is to Black Shield is Lovelink's ultis, right? And he didn't do that. And Lovelink just constantly got uh, kept kicking Watch and kept kicking Zephyr into his team. His reaction time really isn't good enough to merit picking Morgana. Yeah, as actually I want to touch on that point. We can call the graphic down by now because we know like what the comps are like like. But I think the Black Shield's actually good because in these fights, I want a player I want to highlight is Gogoan and his E usage on Aurelia, his stuns were on point and that's ex the only reason they were is because he manipulated the Black Shield, but you can Black Shield Charm as well. Charm as well, the stun, so there's enough CC that Black Shield works. Plus Gorilla played such a good Morgana. His binds were on point and the one more thing about the Morg matchup, if you look at the 2v2 bottom, if you were thinking purely in terms of trades, Janna Lucian should win that, but they won that lane because Corky Morg pushes so quickly, and that opened up the map for uh, for Najin White Shield so well. So I, I like the Morg pick, I like how he played it, Bar in his first buy on lane, I think he played a, such a good uh, Morgana, and, and I'm gonna stop whining soon, but the Frost Queen's claim, <laughs> last point, was just really well used. It's the first time I see a Frost Queen's game rush that I agree with, and he used it so many times, set up his bind set as his ultis. Okay, I'm done. Well, it functions a lot. Now, when we talk about Nodge and White Shield, the way they like to play the game, especially with uh, the Zed pick, is we often see them take Zed Janna, okay? So we see him the engage from Goog on Zed. He goes in, and then he leaves his shadow next to Janna, assassinates a target, comes back to Janna, heals. So this is functioning very similarly. Comes back to the Morgana, there's the Frost Queen claim going out for the peel, and you could just disengage with Morgold and the bind as well. So I think it does suit stylistically. And this was only Gorilla's uh, second professional game ever on Morg, so not something that OMG was expecting for sure. I just want to p point out how weird the mid picks are, in my opinion. First pick Zed when Janna's open. Janna's historically been encountered as Zed. Not only does Janna pack exhaust, but ulti will blow Zed away, and Zed's ulti no longer puts the shadow right next to you. It puts it where his original location was. So Janna's just like a natural counter to Zed. Also, Ari, to me, Corky poked Ari out before every dragon fight. That was probably one of the biggest reasons why Cool was unable to participate in any of the dragon fights, and OMG just had to give everyone up. Honestly, Ari had very little game impact and didn't even win lane, so I didn't really understand why Cool had picked Ari in the first place. Well, the entire composition both of these squads relied a lot on picks, finding those kills. Let's pull up the replay that we do have in the middle lane. It's actually both teams securing some kills. Let's roll this clip out and, you know, maybe double lift or Krepo, you can chime in here on how these teams are trying to set up these individual kills on other buddy targets. All yeah, I know is well, to God. Yeah, this guy is so good on Lee Sin. He basically broke open this match to, together with Go Going. Every fight he would go in and find a way to either kick somebody, flash kick, or kick flash. He basically differentiates with, between the three versions of catching people out, and he's so smart. And I just want to point out that before he made that big play right there, uh, the map was completely Najin White Shields. They had taken mid tower. They had actually taken, if you look at all three outer towers, this is a really good play by save, by the way. He just went in and got a sick pick with Sefa's rockets. And they chase Go going down in a second as well. Najin White Shield going to find the kill, and they lead to Dragon. This is the limit of OMG's comp. They, if they burn all their firepower, they can get turned on so well. But at the same time, they, they, the catches from uh, both teams are just so vital. Whoever like finds the pick can win the game, but I think throughout the game, uh, Magic Watch Shield has more pick potential, but loses the initial 5v5 fight. And that's actually why they ended up winning, because in the end, they, they started team fighting against the Janna, and well, that and the Sneaky out. Baron. I mean, yep. if, that, if the Baron sneak didn't occur, we'd probably be looking at a different outcome. Yep. From this Let me pose a thought to you guys, because I felt watching this game, Najin White Shield demonstrated better minion, like side lane control, than I think any of the teams I've seen in quarterfinals. At least you had an extended laning phase, it was easier to demonstrate it. But while they were pushing out those lanes and controlling it, it opened up the possibility for the Sneaky Baron from OMG with all of these carries. And from there on out, OMG was smarter about playing the map. Agree or disagree? I think 
OMG was smarter when it came to Baron Vision. They had that one ward, if you guys remember, right outside of the pit to the left. Yeah. They sneaked that ward, and it's such a typical ward. And I think Najin White Shield is a good adaptive team, and they will learn. And next game, if there's a Baron contention, those spots will be sweeped yeah. immediately. And that's, I think, where the difference is going to come. Double left, we saw a first round pick Janna for OMG. We saw Cloud on stage. I instantly feel his presence was more notable than uh, Dada's from the group stage. It's a little unfair in game one. But what's your take on seeing the team now, considering you thought Shield was going to win this until Cloud was added? I really, really think they were they were prepared for this match. I mean, when they saw that first pick Zed, they immediately reacted with that insta-lock Janna. And I think that was super smart. Janna is historically a counter to Zed. And, and Gorilla is really good Janna. Yeah, and Gorilla is really good Janna. It takes away from that. Um, I had heard before that Cloud was a two-trick pony. Uh, historically, he only really plays Nami and Thresh in the LPL. But the fact that he was able to break out Janna for the first time on world stage, that's really impressive to me. Yeah, and when we go into the next match now, this is the second quarterfinal where I feel that we've seen a Korean team kind of test the waters with a... Uh, this time it was a very classic shield draft. We've we've seen this virtually identical draft earlier in this tournament. When Blue came up, they tried the same kind of strategy that didn't really work for them in the Champions Summer Final. I feel that uh, they're just like getting a feel right now and the adaptations we're going to see in Pick and Ban will be pretty dramatic in the next game. I hope we get a winning lane matchup for Gagoin because he's the one that kept OMG in that game because all the lanes were either equal or getting pushed in, but he was winning his lane to the point where he could open up the map again. And he's basically like the rock solid player of OMG. Yeah, I'll be honest, without Loveland and Go Going's plays that game, OMG had really no chance. The Baron call was good, but what kept them in the game after Dragon after Dragon losing all those objectives was really just Loveland and Go Going. So I hopefully they have better game. Loveland actually had a really awful start. If you remember, he got killed at level two at Kha'Zix's red buff, and he was still able to make such a big game impact. I wonder what will happen if he doesn't start the game off dying randomly. Yeah, Loveling very aggressive. The, the number of flash kicks we've seen throughout the game, ooh, the success rate can be debated, yeah. but nevertheless, they went in. Guys, we are going to take a brief break in the action. While we're off the rift, Najin White Shield tells us about their emotional journey to Worlds. Summer부터 저희 실드가 이제 멤버가 바뀌고 제가 탑으로 포지션을 바꿨잖아요. 솔로 랭크 10등을 딱 찍었을 때 나진에서 연락이 오더라고요. 제가 약간 늦은 나이로 나진 실드에 이제 입단하게 됐는데 이 나이로 이제 프로 게이머로서 성공할 수 있을까? 저희 팀의 뭐 마티 형이었던 노철이 형이 나가면서 새로운 재거리 형 소드에서 그래도 경험이 많았던 정글러잖아요. 탑을 잘 키워주니까 제 실력도 늘고 그렇게 팀 스타일을 찾아간 것 같아요. 한 단계 한 단계 올라가는 게 되게 뿌듯했고 우여곡절 끝에 명경기들을 많이 만들면서 올라가게 되어서 좀 재밌게 경기한 시즌이었던 것 같아요. 우승했으니까 다음 시즌 우승하겠지. 뭐 그렇게 생각했어. 팔 강에서 승승 패패패를 당했잖아요. 기분이 되게 오묘하더라고요. 팀원들과의 신뢰도 좀 떨어지고 초심에 가졌던 마음이 조금 나태해지지 않았나. 그래도 아직 우리 롤드컵 남아있고 멘탈을 좀 추스렸던 시간이 필요했던 것 같아요. 거의 막 반쯤 포기했었어요. 감독님이 새벽 4시에 부르시더라고요. 니네가 하나 된게 중요한 거니까 부담감 갖지 말고 편하게 해봐라. 어, 뭐 마음 편하게 해. 네. 알지? 충분히 이길 수 있으니까 마음 편하게 가자. 네. 자, 가자. 하나, 둘, 셋. 화이팅! 저희 팀과 KTV가 선발전 1일차에서 붙게 됐을 때 들리는 말로는 온도도 그런 진출권에 진출하지 못한 팀들끼리의 대결이라고 자극을 엄청 받았었어요. 대회 때 오니까 게임을 너무 잘하더라고요, 다들. 좀 웃으면서 했던 것 같아요, 이제. 
이 분위기면 KTA는 이길 수 있겠다. 결과적으로 이기고 나서 이제 SK가 남았었잖아요. 4경기 때 저희가 발언을 시도했는데 페이커 선수가 뺏어가셨잖아요. 잠깐 한 2, 3초 동안 정적이 왔어요. 우리가 이길 수 있다 이런 식으로 생각하고 다 같이 좀 으쌰으쌰 했던 것 같아요. 제가 마지막 한타 때 죽으면서 페이커를 끌고 죽었는데 사형 선고를 걸면서 딱 생각했어요. 아, 이건 이겼다. 그때부터 소리 지르기 시작했었어요. 그냥 롤드컵 보기만 하던 걸 이제 내가 가는구나. 끈질김인 것 같아요. 다른 팀들과는 다른 끈질김을 갖고 있고. 뭘 하든 뻔한 결말은 재미가 없잖아요. 우리의 노력과 집념이 선발전을 통해서 보여진 것 같아서 정말 기뻤어요. 저희 팀 하면 이걸 라진이라는 단어가 있잖아요. 불리하다가도 역전을 하게 되니까 막 이걸 라진 이러는데 솔직히 라진 실드가 우승할 거란 생각을 잘안할것 같은데 롤드컵 결승전에서 전 세계인이 이걸 라진이를 외칠 수 있게 꼭 우승하고 싶어요. 좋아. 라진 실드 꼭 주인공이 돼서 주목받고 싶어요.